G'day guys, Matty Extreme Auto Caravan and Camping on another off-grid setup. This one's on a Universal this time and it is fully off-grid, running the air conditioner as we speak. I'm running the Ibis 3 uh, for a few hours now because it's starting to warm up here in Adelaide. And this one was a little bit of a different one. So the customer actually supplied me with his own lithium batteries that he purchased a while ago. Um, normally I wouldn't fit other customers' stuff, um, you know, if it's second hand they've used it for a bit but look he, he knows the history of these so i was happy to to fit it for him so he's got two of the iTech weld 120 amp hour lithium batteries i've never seen any dramas with these batteries i was happy to fit them for him so he supplied the batteries i've done the rest of the system so this one here has two of the 120 amp hour lithium batteries that he supplied uh, we've put a red arc 50 amp dc to dc charger for fast vehicle replenishments that's 50 amps from the engine while he's driving as well as um, you've got the Victron 150 on this one, and I've managed to squeeze four 200 watt all Volta Black Series panels on the roof of this. Pretty cool with the roof space, able to get that much solar. We were really happy with that. So that's four 200 watt panels, total of 800 watts in peak sun he'll get. That's all feeding into that Victron 50, and we're getting close to that as we speak. I could have gone for an 80 volt string, you know, four in series, but um, you know, I kept it at 40 volts. I split them. There is slight shading, maybe, you know, it's close to the air conditioner. And when your panel's really close to the air conditioner, I think there's about a 80 mil gap here. As the sun comes on this side of the AC, it's gonna cast a shadow onto the panels. You can avoid it, you can't avoid it. It is what it is. You know, you wanna get solar up on the roof at the end of the day, there are compromises. It's just how you wire it is, you know, is gonna make it make or break. So. I've done these two that are above and beside the air conditioner here um, in its own 40 volt string and the ones at the rear in a 40 volt string. So they run independently. So if there's shading here, they'll keep going vice versa. So we've done that. We've also got the uh, Victron 30 amp mains charger in this one. Haven't gone for the uh, full Victron setup in this. We've gone for the Enerdrive changeover system. So it's got the Enerdrive 2000 watt inverter. So that means all of your factory outlets that are in here, the microwave, the air conditioner which is on, everything, your hair dry, all of your factory outlets, including the one outside, will all run at the touch of a button. Very easy with the Drive changeover system, just like the Victron. The monitoring system on this, we've gone for the Victron BMV 712, so you're able to see you know, solar replenishment, basically anything that comes in and out of the batteries is monitored up on that display. So right now, like I said, we're running the air conditioner for what, you know, three hours or so now, and we've we're at 69 percent state of charge so i've used 30 you know 25 30 percent of this battery bank which is pretty full when i got here so that's pulling the ibis 3 you guys can't see it i'll show the video next i'll uh, tag it on at the end of this we're pulling well over a thousand watts now you guys that have seen my other videos know about all the air conditioners that we deal with all the different brands the ibis air command the ibis 4 the harrier plus the harrier light trimmer adventure all these are very efficient air conditioners the Ibis 3 would be one of the thirstiest up there with the Houghtons and the big ones like that. These are not an inverter style air conditioner. What that means is it will not ramp up and ramp down like the Ibis 4, the Harrier, the Harrier Plus. These are the roof clunkers. Clunk on, clunk off, no soft start. It's hard on the products, it's hard on the inverter, but the Enerdrive inverter is a great unit and it runs it. So. Even the startup, it's got that pulse. It will, it doesn't kick out, it's brilliant. So we're running it right now, have been for a couple of hours, probably used a fair amount of amp hours um, at the moment. We're receiving about 700, 750 watts of solar at the moment, um, but we're, you know, we're pulling 1100, so just, just under 1100. It will last during peak hours, but not as much as a Harrier Plus, which is why I try to tell people if you're going to run an air conditioner off the grid, guys, invest in the air conditioner. They are way more efficient. They draw between 40 and 70 amps per hour. And if you've got enough solar on the roof, you know, like this would have, and if he had the, the inverter solar air conditioner, you could run it during peak hours without worrying about battery capacity. In this case, we're receiving, you know, 700-ish, 750, but we're pulling 1100. So yeah, we're using battery capacity, you just have to manage your energy, you have to manage your battery capacity with this setup. Um, that said, microwaves, kettles, toasters, 
induction cookers, air fryers, go nuts. You know, your microwave, like I said, you're not running these things for hours on end. You're, you're cooking, you're off. And that's it. It's an overlay system. All of the 12 volt stuff, including the compressor fridge, runs from the battery bank. This just sits on top of it and runs with it. So yeah, check it out. So there we go, straight out of the bed. You've got the customer's existing uh, 120 amp hour iTech well batteries. Now they're outside in chassis mount boxes. We've done a full relocation inside here. Uh, we've had to because we, we keep these really close to the inverter. So there's the end of drive 2000 watt inverter with the transfer switch, like I said, running at all the factory GPOs. We've got all of the MIDI fuses there running for all the factory circuits because we've done a full relocation, like I said. There's the MPPT 150 taking care of the solar array on the roof. There's the 30 amp Victron smart charger for mains charging. So when old mate plugs into mains, it automatically charges the batteries. And that's all before the inverter, of course. There's the Red Arc 50 DC to DC charge. So that's 50 amps from the vehicle while we're driving, running the engine and the roof solar as well. So, you know, this has the potential to put in 100 amps an hour while he's driving and in good sun. How good's that? That's, that's a lot of power, you know. 100 amps with the, you know if you drain you know he's going to expand which is why we kept the gap here if he drained these to if he took 200 amp hours out of this battery bank and he looked at the victron monitor and it said 40 amp hours remaining which what have we got here infinite hours there we go so we're a bit of solar coming in on top of running the ac so if he was if he was to wake up and say look we've used i don't know 200 amp hours in two hours if it's sunny he could fill that up that's pretty amazing. Even if it wasn't sunny, you know, in four hours he's filled it up. That's the beauty about having really big chargers and lithium batteries, as these batteries love being charged. They absolutely love it. Better than the old AGMs by far. So what have we got here? We've been running the Ibis 3 now, like I said, for a, you know, a couple of hours, about two, two and a bit hours now. What have we used? So this was full when we started, about 97 to be honest, there we go. So in two and a half hours, in pretty good sun, we've used 66 amp hours from this battery bank. Like I said, guys, the Ibis 3 isn't recommended for use off grid. This thing will suck 100 to 110 amps an hour. They are thirsty roof clunkers. Um, but I'm just showing you guys here that the Enerdrive 2000 will run it, All right? It will run it. Not there we go, there's the kick in. You hear that? That was that old, <laughs> it was a lot louder out here. Um, yeah, the old, the old roof clunker kicking in. So let's have a look what she's sucking. There you go. So I've got this just here set so you guys can see the wattage. There we go, look, 1200, 1100. They're very thirsty, horrible things. <laughs> so we are, our consumable dry, it's probably over because we've got, you know, got, I've got lights running, a compressor fridge going. But I'll just show you, so we'll call it, where are we? 1200 watts, there we go. 1.2 kilowatts, so take note of that. But look what we're actually pulling from the battery. Now, the difference there is the solar on the roof, okay? So when you've got a good solar system, and the way that we do it, is you've got the ability to take off from that number so if i were to shut the solar down you're obviously going to see that number there all right probably slightly more because like i said we're running compressor fridges and stuff like that so we're only really pulling 740 watts or you guys that want to work in amps or 56 from the battery now that's going to calculate time remaining about three hours there you go It'll figure itself out. It'll, it'll drop. It'll drop surely. So, time remaining. Running that thing. Not bad. Not bad. If I were to kill the solar, that number would dramatically decrease. We'd be dead flat in maybe two hours. But there we go, guys. Off grid. This is how easy it is, guys, to use one of our systems on the side of the road, wherever you are, completely off grid. It's as simple as opening up your door. 12 volts already on, always is. Fridge is always on. Now, if I want to use the microwave, 
all I have to do, without even opening up a cupboard, There we go. Oh, look at that. Air conditioner came on too. <laughs> and that's how quick it is, guys. All completely off-grid. Side of the road. Run your microwave. Anything plugged into that. That's an induction cooker. Coffee machine. Air conditioner. The works. The full kit and caboodle. Run whatever you want, anywhere, anytime. No generators.